I know from working on Tomorrow's World so many years ago, this has been a long time coming. It isn't just a sudden thing, you know, all all car development companies or, or you know, areas in the development in, in companies have been working on this for a very long time. But what's also intriguing, I think, is when people first approach this decision, well, what's the difference between a hybrid, a pure, a half hybrid? I know, yeah, like, you know, there are so many terms and I think people are, it's confusing. Have you got a simple way of describing it? The industry will talk about it as a from hybrid to plug-in hybrid and pure EV or battery electric electric vehicle. And, and essentially there are those three types. So a hybrid being a effectively a petrol or diesel car that has an electric motor, but you don't plug it in. You've got the next stage, which is then a plug-in hybrid electric vehicle, which is still a petrol or diesel car, but you, you plug it in to charge that kind of electric. A motor or battery and then you've got a battery electric vehicle which is just a, a pure ev and just runs solely off electricity one of the really 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 important bits is home charging is how do i charge at home yeah. um and again oh here's a whole new pandora's box to open with lots of questions and answers and the um most important being can you you know can you charge at home um, walk me through that a bit. Yeah, so I, I mean, charging at home piece is, is actually what makes EV beautiful and simple. So effectively, charging at home, um, you can, when you purchase a vehicle, you can get access to uh, home charging units, which kind of for those of people who are listening and don't know is, is almost like a wall unit. It sits kind of on the outside of your garage or inside of your garage. It's got a plug in it. And the principle being, if you think about your iPhone, you plug it in at your bedside overnight and it, it, it miraculously charges. You can literally unplug from that unit, plug it into your car and your car then takes the electricity that powers your home and powers your car. Fine. And here I live in the countryside, so I have actually got space outside to have a charger. That's fine. That's not a problem. Yeah. But if, when I lived in London, where would I have done it there? I lived in a terrace house on the street. Really, really good question. And I think that's one of the things that some of these funding projects are addressing now. So in cities where, you know, people are in flats or like, you know, as you said, you're in a terrace house, you don't have off street parking. How do you get people to take up EVs when they, they don't have the ability to have that charging unit? There are networks um, developing uh, the likes of connected curb ubertricity where they've come up with um, novel charging systems that are either through lamp posts or the charging units come up through the ground and through pavements and then a variety of those that that street can use those charges so there's there's, there's lots of those charges in the likes of london now to provide that service to people um, it's not as ideal as having off street parking um, in that you are reliant on that network um, but there are those options available and that's kind of being developed more and more to, to provide that service to people in those situations. Not everybody knows. You, this is not a situation where you can trail an extension lead down the garden and over the fence. You know, I have heard of that happening and, you know, well, fair enough, it's an electric car. What, well, you know, it, and it's, it's a really difficult one, isn't it? But, you know, you need a proper charger designed for your car it's not an extension lead job uh, no so yeah when we talk about home charging units it is a purpose-built unit with a purpose-built lead um that, that plugs into your car and um, some people uh, have and do use three pin plugs to charge the car it takes a very long time especially on the new cars with bigger batteries to actually charge that car but it's it's an interim solution if you if you are waiting to have your home charging unit installed. But generally, what you would have if you have off street parking is you have a unit that goes on the wall, and generally the electricity being supplied is around seven kilowatts uh, an hour, uh, which is normal kind of the, the home electricity supply in the UK. I mean, for some people, what do you mean I have to have a home charger installed? That's going to put them off right away. How simple is that, really? Honestly, honestly. It's not that difficult. 
Um, there are a there are a variety of home charging unit companies, um, both that range from being very basic, uh, all the way through to expensive ones where you can you know if you have solar panels as an example you might want to use the solar that you generate to power that car which makes an, an awful lot of sense because then you're not paying for electricity so you know i think that um there's a variety of units to suit a variety of needs like i'll try and make a green decision where i can like most of us but <clears throat> also if something's going to be stuck outside my house <laughs> Does it look nice? What, are they, what do they look like? I don't want something really ugly sticking outside my house for years. No, it's a, it's a, it's a really good point. And at the end of the day, that's why we love the likes of Apple, right? They're aesthetically pleasing. Um, they're, again, there's, there's different options for different needs. So um, for those who literally do just want something to stick on their wall and for it to charge, you have that capability to get it. There are some very slick looking units um, for example, we use the guys at EO. It's the smallest unit on the market. It's black. It it doesn't um, doesn't stick out um, so, and, and is very smart and functional um, all the way through to some of the most expensive like Anderson units who like, you know, work with Porsche Taycan customers. And the other question that I had was what on earth does tethered or untethered mean? So, so tethered or untethered is simply the charging unit that you have at your house that you put on the wall. Do you want a cable connected to that unit that you then just simply plug your car into? That's tethered. Untethered is that there isn't a cable that comes with that unit and you use the cable that you probably got in your boot. And every time you want to plug it in, you have to take the cable out of the boot and then plug the car into the charger. That's untethered. So it's simply whether there's a cable attached to the charging unit or not. So then talking of, you know, all, all the pros and the cons one of the biggest cons that i seem to read about is range anxiety which seems terrifying to me <laughs> i mean what do you do if you run out of miles <laughs> talk to me about range anxiety i think range anxiety is is a very real thing well tell us what tell tell us what it is because i think not everyone will know what it is immediately so i guess range anxiety is that you uh, as you're as you're driving you you obviously are getting anxious that you're not going to have enough miles to get to where you're ultimately trying to get to where we used to have petrol and diesel cars you never worried about it too much I think also because you know that there's going to be a petrol station around somewhere and not have to worry you, about yeah, it you just stop off and fill up yeah so I, I think that it's it's a it's a concept that kind of goes hand in hand with public charging and availability and, and charging units working and I think a lot of it comes from you know not having the knowledge or not having been in this technology before. If you knew if, if we had the same infrastructure for example as we do now for petrol you know if you knew oh look at me I've nearly run out of miles I'll just quickly you know I might be a bit late but I'll stop in and get some you know I'm fine but you but it's not so simple is it because the charging network I mean, is it really there yet? It's around about 90% of all charging is done at home. So rather than having to go to a petrol or a petrol station again, 90% of the time you never have to. You can plug that car in at home unless you don't have off street parking and you live in a flat, which is slightly different again. But you can be powering that car and powering it overnight. And generally it's then powered for when you need it. The public charging infrastructure is you'll have seen so many more charging points going into the ground, so many you know, different networks that you can choose from. I think one of the key things is actually getting the reliability of those charging networks and infrastructure to a point where people in their head go, okay, there's a charging point there, but they're not worried about whether it's working. My key concern is actually, is there someone going to be there first and does the charging point work? Right. And, it, you know, uh, my understanding is it is all a little bit chaotic in that you've got to have a membership for this one and a log on for that one. And, uh, you know, there's so many. It's not just as simple as here's my credit card. I can pay. You can you can tap your credit card a lot of the time now. There's a lot of like, you know, rapid charging stations and a lot of the networks um, where you can just do pay as you go. It can be cheaper to sign up 
to, to, to subscriptions um, depends how much you're using them as to whether that works for you. Um, it's in its infancy, it's building, it's developing. It's not as easy as it could be and it is a bit fragmented, but you can get by. The most important question then for someone like me is, is it the right time now or do I wait a little bit longer for, you know, until the industry's caught up better, the network's better, the, you know, is now the right time? I'm obviously going to be biased and say yes. Um, but I think, again, if, if for, for consumers, I think it's about looking at, you know, how do you, how do you use a car? And, and to date, I think one of the problems is, and you alluded to it before, there's so much information that it makes it really difficult to actually go, is it the right choice for me to make? So I think it, it is about looking at your journey and understanding, could, could an EV work in principle? To, to cover those journeys and if the answer is yes then it makes an awful lot of sense to go ev now great thank you oh you're welcome thank it's you so fab to speak to you i mean there is so much to talk about yeah the whole let's, new world let's talk about it let's it's help as many fun. people go ev as possible yeah thank you thank you very much guys thanks philippa bye bye, bye. bye.